Let's get real. You and I both know you've got habits holding you back. Every day, you fall into the same loops. Your brain locks into autopilot, doing things that contradict what you really want. Like this guy. Let's call him Dan. Dan just started an exciting new job, but it's right across from a bar, and Dan likes his booze a bit too much. The first day, Dan's feet carried him right to that bar after work. He tried to fight it, but couldn't really help himself. After a few beers, he stumbles home late. The next morning, he's tired and regretful at his desk with a hangover. Sound familiar? Our habits own us, man. Studies show almost half of what you do daily isn't a real decision. It's a pre-programmed loop in your brain, a reflex, and those habits are robbing you of becoming who you want to be. So how do you rewrite that programming and upgrade your autopilot? How do you crack the code of your habits and break free? I'm going to give you the straight truth on the steps that actually work to rewire your habits for good. If you're sick of the same old patterns holding you back and you're ready to take control, buckle up. This is the hard-hitting guide to engineering your habits and directing your transformation, starting now. The Habit Loop You're stuck, not because you're weak, but because you're wired. Hardwired, in fact. Your brain's doing its own thing, it's got you looped in like a rat in a maze. You've got a habit loop. It's real and it's nasty. Let's break it down. Number one, Q, hear that? It's the trigger. You smell pizza and what happens? Saliva floods your mouth. Stress pops up and suddenly you're craving a smoke. That's your brain screaming for a hit. Number two, routine, you fold. The lighter clicks, the inhale happens, or maybe you gobble down that slice. This is you stuck in the do phase. You're not even thinking, just reacting. Number three, reward, dopamine. That's your brain's candy. You get a hit and it feels good. For a moment, you're on cloud nine, but ask yourself, are you really? Number four, craving. This is where the hook sinks in. You liked it, didn't you? Now you want more. It's like quicksand. The more you struggle, the deeper you sink. Number five, repetition. You've heard practice makes perfect. Well, this is practice making pathetic. The more you run this loop, the more it digs into your neural pathways. Number six, belief. This is the killer. You tell yourself, I'm just a smoker, or I'm lazy, that's who I am. No, it's not. It's who you've become, and that's a world of difference. Why do you let a simple loop control your life? You think you can't break it? You're not some puppet on strings. Get this straight. You're not a spectator in your life, and this is not just bad habits, but rather a hijack of your life. Are you going to let a few neural pathways tell you who you are? I don't think so. Let's beat this. Step one, self-awareness. Self-awareness is the first step. You've got to understand your habit loop and become an observer of your patterns. Identify the cue, the routine, and the reward driving this beast. Let's break it down. The cue is your trigger. For Dan, it was walking past the bar after work, which flipped on his autopilot routine, stopping for beers. Then comes the routine itself. The actual behavior you do without thinking. Could be biting your nails, skipping the gym, grabbing a donut, or anything you repeat automatically. The third piece is the reward. That rush of dopamine you're really after. For Dan, the reward was feeling relaxed after a long day. Now just this awareness alone can work magic. You start catching the cue, realizing, oh, here comes that craving again. That moment of consciousness is big, you can start to pause and make intentional choices and not just act on autopilot. Awareness brings power over your patterns, but to really rewire yourself long-term, you need to dig deeper. Ask yourself, why is this habit loop in my life? What need does it fill? What am I really getting from this? Understanding the psychological roots is key to replacing it with something healthier. Get curious about yourself. Observe without judgment. The more you can illuminate your inner world, the more control you gain over your outer world. You feel me? Self-awareness takes courage, no doubt. But once you shed light on your habit loops, you can start to rewrite those lines of code in your head. You can build the identity, the life, you want. This awareness step alone can transform you if you embrace it. So, take that hard look within. Step 2. The Art of the Swap Once you've spotted those habit loops, it's time for Step 2. The Swap you substitute your routine for a new positive behavior that delivers a similar reward. Remember Dan, heading to the bar instinctively after work? 
He realized he was craving that feeling of relaxation after a stressful day. So Dan started taking a new route home, one that didn't pass by the bar, but he still needed to de-stress. Instead of beer, he started using his walk to call an old friend or listen to music. Activities that relaxed him too. That was his swap. Same cue, same reward, new routine. You've got to replace the old habit with something new that scratches that itch. Otherwise, you'll just default back. Trust me. Your brain loves efficiency. It wants to keep doing what it knows to get what it wants. Even if the habit's bad for you, you need to retrain it. Now, if you've spent years cementing behaviors, focusing on just one at a time is key. Don't try to overhaul your whole life overnight. Pick one habit, swap in that new routine, let it solidify through repetition, then move to the next. Change takes time and consistency, but with the right swap, you can steer your autopilot where you truly want to go. Momentum builds. Who you were yesterday won't be who you are a month from now. This swap is powerful, but not always easy. Try things out and track what works. You might stumble at first, but don't get down on yourself. That's part of the process. Stick with it, and your new routine will start to feel natural. Those neural pathways will be paved smooth, and you'll realize you've taken another big step towards creating the life you want, consciously and intentionally. Step three, habit stacking. All right, brothers, you've identified your habit loop and swapped in a new routine. Now comes step three, and this is big. Start small with habit stacking. See, trying to overhaul your whole life at once never works. You burn out fast. The key is micro habits, tiny new behaviors you can stick to. This is where habit stacking comes in clutch. You take an existing habit and piggyback your new micro habit right on top. Like, let's say after your morning coffee, you wanna start exercising more. Don't try running five miles today. Tomorrow you'll be sore and will quit. Instead, habit stack. After your coffee, do just 10 push-ups or one minute of squats. The next week, up it to 15 push-ups or two minutes of squats. Tiny steps, but they stack up. Same goes for meditation. Start with just one mindful breath after brushing your teeth, then build up to five long breaths and so on. Momentum compounds. Those neural pathways strengthen with repetition. Before you know it, you've got a whole new ritual wired in. Don't get impatient and overdo it early on. Remind yourself this is a marathon, not a sprint. Consistency over intensity. Just focus on sticking to those micro habits. Some days will be tougher. We all slip up, but here's the key. Never miss twice. If you miss one day, get back at it the next, no matter what. Build that self-discipline muscle. Stop thinking you need to be motivated. Motivation flickers out quick. You need the self-mastery to follow through. Step four, the obstacle course. You've started replacing old routines and stacking new micro habits. Now comes step four, the obstacle course. You have got to make your bad habits inconvenient and put roadblocks in your own way. The easier you make it to slip up, the more you will. Sounds counterintuitive, right? Remember our friend Dan trying to curb his drinking? Here's how he put this concept into action. He asked the bartender to ban him for 30 days. Drastic, but it worked. He built a speed bump between himself and booze. If you snack late at night, put your junk food on a high shelf or in the back of the pantry. Better yet, put it behind your health snacks if you can't resist buying them in the first place. Anything to disrupt autopilot. Make it hard to reach, so you pause and ask yourself, is it worth the climb? I hope your answer is no when that happens. Delete games off your phone that suck up time. Block the websites that pull you into rabbit holes. Basically, re-engineer your environment and your responses. The convenience of your current habits is what keeps pulling you in. Adding friction interrupts the conditioning. It won't be easy at first. Your brain will scream for that quick dopamine hit, but stay strong. Ride out the discomfort. On the other side, it gets easier, and you realize you don't even miss it like you thought you would. You needed to break the spell your habit had over you. Of course, banning yourself from the bar or locking up sweets doesn't address the root causes. You've still got to swap in healthy routines and mindsets. But combined with those other steps, making your bad habits inconvenient can be a game changer. Again, anything to disrupt that autopilot. Step five, your tribe. Your squad has an enormous impact on your habits and growth, for better or worse. That brings us to step five, change your tribe. Seriously, take a look at your circle. 
Are they holding you back or lifting you up? Do they inspire excellence or enable mediocrity? You become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Their mindsets and behaviors rub off on you, consciously and unconsciously. So if you want better habits, you've got to surround yourself with people already modeling that. It's that simple. Like if you want to get in shape, befriend some inspiring fitness fanatics. Their passion will rub off on you. Quit going out to eat with friends who peer pressure you into poor food choices. Find a squad focused on healthy cooking and eating. When your team shares your values and aspirations, you feel that camaraderie. You don't even have to try that hard to stay on track because you lift each other up. Now this may mean leaving some people behind. That's tough, but necessary growth. Don't feel guilty. You're just going in different directions now. Build your tribe intentionally. Seek out motivators and achievers. Let go of relationships that bring you down. Create an empowering inner circle and positive peer pressure will activate the right habits. You'll be amazed how your self-discipline and vision expand. Step six, mindfulness. We've covered a lot of practical steps, but real talk, the game changer is step six, mindfulness. Being mindful means tuning into your thoughts, emotions, and behaviors from a place of open curiosity, not judgment. It's about being hyper aware of what's going on in your inner world from moment to moment, watching those habit loops spin without getting sucked into autopilot. With mindfulness, you catch your cue early. You notice the slightest urge to smoke, to skip your workout, to procrastinate. The earlier the better. Then you have a choice. Observe that craving and make an intentional decision on how to act, or just react on autopilot like always. Over time, this self-awareness rewires your brain. You rely less on habitual impulses and respond more consciously, but mindfulness takes practice. Set reminders to check in with yourself throughout the day. How do you feel right now? Where is your focus? What are you craving? When you slip into an old habit, don't criticize yourself. Observe it calmly, then refocus. Stay patient and non-judgmental. The more mindfulness changes your relationship to your inner world, the more power you gain over your outer world. Make no mistake, this is hard spiritual and mental work, but the payoff is huge. You start responding to life instead of reacting. You design your habits versus letting them design you. So in review, the six steps to upgrade your habits are, one, understand your habit loop. Two, swap out bad routines for good ones. Three, use habit stacking to start small. Four, increase friction between you and bad habits. Five, change your tribe and vibe. And six, practice mindfulness. Now, change isn't easy. Your brain resists. You will mess up, no question. But look at failure as research and development. Each time you catch yourself and course correct, you're rewiring your brain's autopilot. Progress compounds. With time and commitment, you absolutely can replace disempowering habits with life-changing ones. People think they need more motivation or discipline to change, but forget that. What you need is a system, specific steps to transform your routines. Use this six-step system, and you can overcome the gravity of old habits. You can build momentum towards the identity, results, and fulfillment you really want. You've got this. If this video has been helpful, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification icon so you are in the loop whenever I drop a new video. Until next time, brothers.